So this is the uh, the prototype that I built. Um, this is using the well, <laughs> oatmeal box and a the um, vibration motor that I got from uh, IC Station. And another cool thing, so they contacted me after I made my video, and they're gonna send me all all the motors I need in order to make a full clock uh, using you know seven seven segments. So I need about maybe. 30-ish of these, so I asked them for that. So they're sending them over. They should be here sometime within the next few weeks. So that is awesome. Uh, is this guy? It's a um, micro vibration motor. Oh, I'd help it if it were on screen. Uh, one to three volts, 5400 RPM, 60 milliamps. So barely anything. And this was absolutely tiny, four millimeters. Um, oh, that's the diameter, and the length is 8 millimeters. This is absolutely tiny, so. And let's see what else. Yeah, 3 volts, 60 milliamps. So, yeah, this looks like it'll do the job. Um, that'll definitely help help me out because I also need to um, scrounge up some of the, um, the driver chips, like H-bridges, for instance. So, this um, segment vein is essentially black PLA, and... I put like a little inset so that I can either uh, 3D print a um, like the actual segment part in white and then glue it in, or I could just take a sticker or something, some paper, whatever, and it'll basically uh, create the lighter color side and then the other side will be obviously just black. So I stuck a little um, bit of like a cutoff from an LED um, just sort of as an axle. Uh, these motors are very small, relatively low current, but they don't have a lot of uh, torque. So I basically need to minimize friction. So I just stuck a little bit of uh, wire in there. And the other end has a spot where I can actually glue the counterweight. Um, so th this way I don't actually have to modify or remove anything on the motor. It'll just glue right on there and then it'll basically flip back and forth. So, uh, as a quick demonstration, I don't actually have a driver circuit up and running yet. Uh, first, I want to finish the mechanics, and then I can work on software and hardware um, circuit-wise. So, basically, I just wired these four sets of switches. So, this acts kind of like an H-bridge. Well, it is. It's a you know tactile H-bridge. And so, if I hit the black buttons, it'll turn to the black side. If I hit the red buttons it'll turn to the the colored side. So basically, just to give you an idea of how the clock would work, this is a single segment, obviously, but there would be uh, seven of them forming digits. So if I wanted to switch it on, it would switch like that. So the way that I actually have it stopping is there is a small plastic tab, and that catches on basically the frame. So this way, I can drive it kind of open loop, so my controller doesn't know what state the segments are in so when you first apply power it would have to reset all of them just to be sure basically you can see uh it takes you know not even a second you know a fraction of a second to actually switch it and it's pretty silent you can see that it 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 happens pretty quickly and i actually measured the current and it's only instantaneously it peaks at like a hundred, a little over a hundred milliamps. Kind of hard to measure because it's so quick. But on average, it would be pretty low. So I'm thinking I could actually run this clock off of like AA batteries. And as long as I keep my microprocessor in sleep most of the time, uh, because it only has to change the segments once every minute, it should actually have pretty good battery life. But yeah, it's pretty cool. You can see... I'm able to to switch the digit and from the other side you can see it's just literally flipping it over this actually works pretty well I, I just use some cardboard to hold kind of anchor the other end in there but yeah so this is my first prototype uh, well sort of a um, a test for whether my idea would actually work or not now the only issue that I've been thinking about and it's become apparent kind of based off of how much space this takes, is the motor juts out a bit. So when I align everything, um, I'm going to have to align it in such a way that I can't have two motors facing uh, the same corner, 
because there won't be enough physical room to mount it unless if I spread out the digit segments. Uh, the only issue is this placement works except for at the bottom. Um, I only have two positions. I could put the motor on the left or the right, but it'll foul with one of these other ones. So there's kind of almost nothing I can do about that. So I thought about maybe if I inset the motor, I can kind of squeeze it in. I think a better way of doing this would just be to use a longer um, shaft, essentially, to bring the motor out here and have these kind of offset slightly and cross over then um, so that I'm able to drive them. There, there'll be a slight uh, height difference, but not really that much since the, um, the shaft is actually pretty thin uh, diameter. So I think this is the best way to get around this issue. So I can essentially have the two uh, motors crossing each other and just missing each other, basically. So that's one option. Another option that I thought of would, would be to have a cutout in the plastic frame where the motor would sit, and basically the entire thing would revolve around the motor. This would be good because um, I can put two anchor points on either side and it would be pretty well balanced so that would you know reduce the amount of torque that the motor would necessarily need to drive. But the only thing is in this case obviously you have um, your white uh, indicator would basically be all around here but then you'd have a cutout in the center where it wouldn't have that color for instance so it would look kind of weird I think I mean this would work these are just other views basically I, I was planning on build, instead of having a notch build a frame that would hold the motor and that would be the end stop basically for the rotating mechanism but I kind of like this method better it's a lot simpler and yeah so I think I'm going to stick with this so yeah I'm just going to keep playing with this. This is really fun. Yeah, I was thinking a couple other ideas I have. Um, I have some, like, sticky back glow-in-the-dark paper. So I can cut that out, and then on the other side, I could put UV LEDs. And so when it turns, you know, maybe, like, once per minute or so after it gets dark, it will flip all the digits off to charge the glow-in-the-dark paper and then flip the correct digits on so basically it would work in the in the daytime as well as at nighttime you can actually see it if I don't have any illumination then I mean this is pretty high contrast but in pitch black obviously you can't see there's no illumination this is a great thing okay I'm gonna ramble for a bit this is a great thing about 3d printers because I had this idea I didn't start building anything until you know tonight and literally from conception of me drawing some, some sketch prints or blueprints, whatever you want to call it, to 3D modeling this, which took like maybe five minutes and this took maybe like another 10 minutes and to printing it out, which took, you know, if this first prototype, I just printed this part and this part alone takes like maybe five minutes, I, I, well, actually maybe five or 10 minutes to print out just this little piece here. And together with both these took maybe 40 minutes. But, you know, to go from concept to actual working prototype took me like half an hour. That, that's like absolutely insane. I love that. <laughs> so definitely 3D printers are awesome. So basically this is, you know, step one, part one of, um, of this clock that I'm making. And as far as I know, I, I've seen maybe one or two other people saw so like one instructable of some guy planning and starting this, but I don't think he ever completed it. And so I, I just kind of wanted to give my take on it. And I'm pretty sure no one has really done exactly this uh, before. So I just wanted to kind of give my take on it. I had a couple more prototypes with uh, different uh, spacings and clearances and whatnot. And so this was basically the first gen. Second gen, um, I added longer flaps to the side to, you know, protect the, the, the flap as it was moving and whatnot. Also because I added some notches so I can add um, like a filament or a bar or something to prevent the digit from rotating too far, basically, to keep it in one state or the other. And so that made it a little bit easier instead of uh, I, I did some kind of weird thing before where I glued on a piece and it just never worked that well. 
And so I ended up moving the tab from kind of this position here over to the side here. Additionally, um, I'd moved up the hole uh, because I was actually running into problems where the disc wasn't able to fully rotate because it was hitting the bottom here. So I increased the height just a, a little bit and, uh, well actually I didn't increase the height, I just moved the hole up. And additionally, I kind of made this slot a little, um, you know, have a little more vertical clearance so I can actually uh, physically manipulate the motor up and down and then I would just hot glue it in place once it's aligned properly because um, I don't know depending on kind of the thicknesses of the motor mounting and whatnot there's some slight clearances so anyway uh, here's the newest prototype this is a uh, version 3 I had a couple more problems I might still add a little more clearance around this throat area it's pretty tight so I actually had to sand that by hand so I'm probably going to end up um, increasing clearances even more so that um, it gets around that. Additionally, I used a thin piece of wire basically going all around the outside. And that keeps the motor from flipping too far past so it gets stuck in one state or the other. And right now it's just friction fit on the motor, but you know, you can hot glue it and whatnot. Anyway, show you it working. So pretty much exactly the same as the um, cardboard prototype but this time in plastic that I can easily print out another 28 of these and then glue them or screw them down to a substrate and you can maybe maybe get a sense of how loud this is it's about as loud as me clicking the button so <laughs> but yeah you can see it, it works pretty reliably actually uh, alignment is pretty critical because if you're off axis slightly, it adds kind of some more strain and torque to the to the motor, so it can prevent it from properly turning. You can see that there's some slight alignment issues. I haven't glued this down yet, so it's not really optimal, especially as I move the wire. It kind of tends to move the motor. But yeah, you can see everything works, and you can imagine a clock with. Um, with many of these, you can see it's a little temperamental. I haven't glued anything down. But anyway, yeah. The uh, interesting part is going to be the drive circuitry. So I've been thinking up how exactly I can manage that. And I've come up with an idea. I read somewhere some guy used um, opto isolators to, to drive sort of like a half bridge arrangement. Um, I, I don't think he used this exact method. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to multiplex them. Uh, if I wanted to use a full bridge for every segment, I would require hundreds of opto isolators, <laughs> which would be a nightmare. So the good thing about using optos is that they're isolated between both the sides, so I don't need a high side driver. I can drive everything from a common ground. Uh, so basically per segment, there, there would be two microprocessor pins, and whether you want to have it spin on or off, basically and you would only drive one or the other, and then the other end would go to, what I'm imagining is using a split supply, so plus minus five volts and then a ground. Uh, so your read relay, uh, because you need current to be able to flow in both directions through the relay, so I can't really use a transistor and I'd rather not use like an H bridge or something like that. So a relay is simple and they're pretty cheap. So basically the relay would select which of the four digits is currently being set. And so once that's on, say for digit one, um, it'll pull that to the ground point. So depending on which of these transistors, phototransistors is on, it'll either sync current or supply it. So in this way, kind of this is a floating middle point and uh, this node right here is pulled down or pulled high. So depending on which of these um, these, uh, you know, diodes is on will determine which direction it can turn. This simplifies it quite a bit. So basically I'll need uh, two per every, uh, two optocoupler per every segment. So that's uh, 14 total for like one digit. And then using four relays, read relays, I can multiplex them. So yeah, uh, all in all, I need two IO per segment, seven segments. Four, uh, four additional control signals for read relays, uh, which will be driven by their own transistor. 
And so 18 IO total just to drive four digit, uh, a four digit clock. So that's an entirely doable. I, I can easily do that with a, um, a small, uh, small pick like the 16 F series. So that's what I'm probably going to end up doing. I need to order, um, opto ISOs. And so, uh, these guys, you can get for about $2, like a, a pack of 50. So I'm just going to order way more than I need. Uh, read relays. I have a couple, but I think I only have like one or two, something like that. So I'm just going to order a handful of those as well. And we should all be set. Then I can, um, once I get one segment, like a uh, one digit working with uh, seven segments, I'll build the control circuitry just for that one, um, one digit and then program the microprocessor and control one digit. And then after I'm done that, then I'll add the relays and I'll add the other segments uh, because it is going to take me some time to build these. My current method uh, to save on um, me tinkering with it, I actually printed um, walls, like plastic walls that come up just underneath that will actually catch the uh, little bit of plastic on the side there. And so you can see that this is the final iteration. Uh, in addition to that, I had to raise the height a little bit because it was uh, rubbing on the bottom here. And so this is my current generation, essentially. <laughs> but yeah, you can definitely see that it works and it's pretty reliable. Right now, this is just a post-it note that I actually stuck in here. Uh, what I'm thinking is maybe going to like a biking store and getting the um, like that highlighter green, neon green uh, reflective tape and cutting it to the exact size and sticking it in there. That would be really cool. So anyway, I rambled on for long enough. I, you know, hopefully when I when I get some time and when I get the parts, I can build like a complete single digit module and test that out. And then it's just a matter of replicating that three other times and then building the drive circuitry. So yeah, um, until I actually get some more progress on this, I will see you guys next time. Bye.